Yo, happy, uh, what is today? Tuesday? Happy Tuesday, everyone. Um, I want to do a Facebook Live slash, this is also going on YouTube, uh, of the nine can't miss steps uh, for, from zero to seven figures, if that makes sense. I don't even know if I wrote that down right. Um, but uh, I just want to share with you guys uh, nine steps, just kind of the logical sequence that I went through uh, to go from zero to seven figures uh, in 12 months. Yeah, we already got somebody on here. Uh, good to see you. If you guys are on the live, hashtag live down below, uh, and I'm going to tune in on my phone. Um, but just uh, before we go into those nine steps, uh, I would love uh, to show you that this isn't bullshit. This is real. Like freaking two and a half years ago, I wasn't making any money. I was, uh, I was working a nine to five job. I had $600 in my bank account. Uh, and it was, it wasn't a fun life. Um, but, uh, turned it around and, um, life is just so much better. I'm out in San Diego. I have an amazing girlfriend, like business is going really well, helping a lot of people. And just to show you guys, like, it's not bullshit. Um, I've got my, I don't know if I'm sharing it right here. There we go. Um, so this is just from, boo, boo, boo. It's just from this month so far. Um, so. Uh, we have a little over $121,000 uh, so far in the month, and I think it's like January 21st. Um, a lot of that is from monthly reoccurring revenue. We have uh, like 90 k on MRR now, uh, and that's from higher ticket programs, that sort of stuff. Uh, so it's all possible. I went from selling uh, $17 uh, PDF uh, through my Facebook group to selling over 60 K packages. Um, so it's all completely possible. And this is without Facebook ads, running Facebook ads to any of our products, anything like that. So I just wanted to show you that before we go into the nine steps. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, boo, boo, boo. Uh, I need to flip this bad boy around. What's good. Need to see who is on here. Yay. Hey, Sarah. Good to see you. David, Miles, Vil, Judy, what's up? Um, so this isn't going to give you like the whole sauce. You're not going to be able to take this simple Google Doc and be like, yo, I can conquer the world now. But uh, it is going to give you a nice little roadmap of kind of what to focus on. Uh, and that's that's really what I wanted to do here. If you guys have any questions, what's up, Buttercup? Uh, if you guys have any questions at any time, let me know, and I'll get them answered by the end of the video. And let me flip this bad boy around for you. Boom. Uh, so uh, let's see. Hopefully you can see my screen. Um, so the nine steps to seven figures. Let's just dive right into it. Um, the very first step, so this is like starting from ground zero. The very first step is to develop a sought after skill. Um, so when I was like just quitting my job, um, I didn't have a sought after skill that I could really scale to seven figures. I had to develop it and it took years and years and years to develop. And the first skill that I really developed in my entrepreneur career was helping local businesses run Facebook ads to make money. Uh, I helped small businesses market uh, their services. So that was the very first step, the very first like really sought after skill that I developed. And it actually came through a course in a Facebook group. I bought into Dan Henry's program. Well, first I bought into Ty Lopez's SMMA program. And then I bought into, which was helpful, it was like the turnkey to entrepreneurship. And then I bought into Dan Henry's Facebook ads for entrepreneurs. It was 997 at the time. Um, and it helped me land my first few clients. And then it was really the Facebook group community that helped me scale past uh, 10K per month uh, was having that support, being surrounded by Jeff Miller, and Mackenzie Lieberman. Um, because there's there's uh, to really develop a skill you need uh, or, or really to uh, grow, you need three things. You need to 
learn the skill, you need the accountability uh, that comes from that community, uh, and then mentorship, being able to have somebody that will put you back on the right path when, when you fall off. So uh, I learned that from Frank Bria, it's called the SAM model, skills, accountability, mentorship. Um, so that's really how I developed my first skill. And uh, then from there, I created a Facebook group around that skill. Um, and I helped other uh, agency owners um, land their first few clients like I did. And Facebook group went from zero to a thousand people in five weeks. Um, and that is when I really started to narrow down my ideal client. So I started to hone in on who, who I can help, who I can't help. Uh, all of that stuff. It was really the agency owners that were first starting out. And I sold a, an $800 beta program at the time. Uh, that was my very first, uh, that was my very first like program that I sold uh, because people started asking me for coaching and courses and it just, it just happened organically where I started growing an audience. They started asking for uh, courses and coaching and then I launched a $800 beta program. And that's what I would suggest for you. Create that audience first. If you're just starting out, create that audience first around that skill, around that, uh, around you helping people. And then you can launch a beta program, a minimal viable product um, that you are just kind of handholding a group of people to a result. If you're just starting out, that's that's where I would start out. And again, if you guys have any questions at any time, uh, drop them down below. Um, then after you have a good idea of who your ideal client is, so who do you love to work with, who can you impact the most, and who can you pay Pay you money. Who can pay you money? It says three things: um, impact, impact, money, uh, and who do you love working with? So that's really your ideal client. <clears throat> you want to then create your million-dollar messaging sequence. So this is something my uh, my right-hand man Avery Ford created. Um, and I have a post here for you to explain everything. So these are the nine psychological triggers um, that uh, you need to bake into your messaging that will take you from zero to a million. If you have these nine points nailed down um, and you are constantly uh, creating content, then you will get to a million dollars. Um, if you create your audience in the right way. So I have this post. I'm not going to go over each point uh, in this video, but if you'd like to go to this post, I'm going to put it in the Google Doc. I'm going to share this Google Doc with you guys as well. So let's do that. Do, do, do. There you go. All right. So once you have that nailed down, um, it's all about creating your, your core offer or offers. So like I said, I created a beta program and then I moved on to a course, which was highly scalable. And then I moved on to a core coaching program. So I was selling a $500 course, which was called Stupid Simple Client Acquisition. And then I started selling a program for $4,500 at the time that was more around Facebook group growth and that sort of stuff. Um, so the course is for your scalable offer, um, that you can launch at any time. And then the coaching program is really where, um, a lot of your, your, your core cash comes in and where you can help people the most. That's where I started off at simple, stupid, simple client acquisition, and then authority accelerator. Um, then launch your marketing and sales machine, uh, actually Step number six is kind of gonna give you a better idea of what to do here. Um, but launch your marketing and sales machine. Like it's all about creating that machine that can bring in cash flow. So if you're under a rule of thumb, if you're under a quarter million dollars a year, 80% of your time should be focused on marketing and sales. It should be about getting people in the door for your offers or offer so you can optimize those so they can run without you so you can only so you uh so you're mainly focused on marketing and sales 
So what we use is the Facebook organic marketing system, um, which, uh, which is inside of uh, our authority accelerator program, and seven figure CEO program. Um, but really it's, you can use any system here. So whether that's Instagram, whether that's YouTube, just make sure, or, or paid ads, just make sure you're building a system or a machine around your marketing and sales. Um, so number six, hiring. My, um, my biggest mistake is I wish I, I, I wish I had uh, learned how to hire um, and develop talent sooner. Um, if I would have, um, I would have probably been at a place where we're making five to 10 million a year. Um, if I would have learned how to really hire and develop talent sooner, we would be helping a lot more people and making a lot more money. Um, so this is super duper crucial. Um, your very first hire should be somebody that can take tasks off your plate so you can open up space for yourself. So this is a virtual assistant or executive assistant. And the rule of thumb here, I would say if you're making 5K per month, you need to have a VA EA in place. And usually what people ask me, how much should I pay them? Um, I would get anybody from uh, $10 per hour uh, to $25 uh, per hour. And you can find a really, really good uh, VA um, online um, or from the Philippines, um, onlinejobs.ph. Um, is a is a good sourcing website. You can use Fiverr. You can use any of those those sourcing websites. Um, we've actually vetted uh, VAs inside of our seven figure CEO program, um, and we have a list of VAs. We've interviewed over two hundred and fifty VAs um, and narrowed it down to a list of twelve of uh, the top VAs that we've we've interviewed uh, for our seven figure CEO clients. Just because that first hire, getting stuff off your plate is so crucial. Um, then, so what you're trying to do is get as much delivery and operations off your plate so you can focus on revenue generating activities like sales and marketing. Um, so what, uh, if you're in the course coaching space, that sort of stuff, hire someone to help you with delivery, um, a coach. My first, uh, after I hired Tasha, I hired Jeff Miller, uh, to be my coach. Um, inside of Authority Accelerator, and usually your best coaches are uh, they uh, they are past clients that know your program really really well. So once you're over 10k per month, hire a coach um, and uh, paying them. The industry average is 50 to 100 dollars per hour for a coach. Um, we set it up, uh, we have some coaches uh, per hour, some coaches just a base rate per month, um, but uh, industry average is $5,200 per hour. And I know Tony Robbins, I think he pays his coaches like 50 bucks an hour. Um, so then uh, also when you're over uh, 10K per month um, and you have a good size audience, I would get a setter and a sales rep. Um, so what I mean by setter is somebody that's having conversations inside of messenger for you, um, and, uh, getting sales calls going, getting them racked up. Or like if you're running Facebook ads, following up with people that have booked appointments, that sort of stuff. Um, I did this with grant worked out really well. Uh, we were doing a little bit more than this. We were doing about 40 K per month, uh, when I hired him. And the main thing is when you're hiring, hire, hire when it hurts. Um, meaning you've hustled, 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 and there are just things that uh, need to be done that uh, you can just hire out and get it off your plate, and it's just hurting from you doing it too much. Um, but anywho, hire a, a setter in sales to drive revenue for you. Uh, pay is on commission. Um, so with Grant, we pay him on commission, and then also for coaching calls. Uh, he does one coaching call a week. I pay him, um, per coaching call, but besides that, he's only paid on commission, uh, for what he, what he closes. Um, 
boo, boo, boo. And then when you're over uh, 25K per month, I would start getting somebody in there to help you with operations, uh, with project management, with developing SOPs, with building out your systems, that sort of stuff. Um, so that's a that's like a very basic breakdown of like what the hiring structure should kind of look like um, for for your online business and kind of what we went through and what we recommend. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, we got 15 people on here. We're, we're, we're dropping people like crazy. Um, all right. So like I said, remove yourself from delivery and operations as much as possible, but ensure your offers still produce amazing results. Um, just keep that in mind. Uh, solidify your systems and processes. So for your processes, you should be looking at um, is a uh, onboarding and delivery process, a financial process, a hiring process. There are so many different processes that uh, you need to start building out at this stage. Just identify what those are, um, all the processes in your business that need to be developed. And the SOP and project management system that we use is Asana. Um, we freaking love it. Um, and then with Asana, you need to start thinking about what softwares can automate certain processes in my business. Um, so really with every task, uh, you should be asking yourself, what do I need to con continue doing? What do I need to delegate? Uh, what do I need to delete? What do I need to automate? Um, so those are really your four choices. So as a CEO, you should be asking yourself, what are these tasks that I need to do? What are the tasks I need to delegate and off my plate? What tasks are not moving the needle and I need to delete? What tasks are uh, can be completely automated? So for example, for the automate part, um, we have a really, really in-depth um, onboarding questionnaire for our clients. And um, we had our coach manually putting in, uh, one of our coaches manually put in the data into our CRM, our client CRM. And that's something that could be completely automated. So we, uh, we identified that and we created a new, uh, a new system to sync up the questionnaire with Airtable. So it's automatically put in. So as a CEO, if you're constantly asking yourself, uh, do I do it? Do I delegate it? Do I delete it? Do I automate it? Um, you'll be able to uh, get shit off your plate in no time. Um, and then uh, last but not least, this is really, really, really what uh, took us over the seven figure mark organically um, is having MRR, monthly reoccurring revenue. Uh, so, for example, we launched our first uh, high ticket offer, our first 12 month offer in May of last year. Um, and we did 106,000 in two days um, at an event. And then we did the same thing in July, launched that offer again and did 165,000 in two days. And then we launched it again in October and did over a million uh, in three days. Um, so that high ticket MRR offer is really what is going to build sustainability and scalability into, uh, your business. Um, and usually this calls for a live event. If you're, if you want to do a big launch for your, uh, high ticket offer, uh, and, and to give you guys, uh, some, some numbers here, we had nine people, nine business owners in the room in July. Uh, and we, uh, we enrolled eight out of nine, um, there for our, uh, year long, um, offer. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, those are the nine steps. Um, and just want to run through those with you real quick. I'll drop this, uh, Google doc down below and, uh, we will just for the 15 of you that are online right now. I love Q and a. So I would just uh, jump into Q&A right now for you. I'll remove this. There we go. What's up, sexy people? Oh, we got 18 people now. Um, 
So drop your questions down below. I love coaching. I love uh, Q&A. So give me your best questions here and I'll get them answered to the best of my abilities. Right now I am dropping in the Google Doc for you. Um, do, do, do. If you found this helpful, smash the fuck out of that heart button, that like button. Do, do, do. And if you want this Google Doc, I'm putting it in the comments right now for you. Uh, buh, buh, buh. All right. Eisenhower or Matrix, baby. I have no idea what that means. Uh, how can I get my first client? Please let me know. Uh, all right. Uh, Haley, what do you do? Um, my suggestion is optimize your personal profile. Let me flip this around for you, Haley. Uh, my suggestion is optimize your personal profile. Make a profile banner, um, make your featured photo. Uh, your, uh, your profile picture should look super professional. And then what I would do from there is provide um, uh, free strategy calls, 45 minute strategy calls, get on them with like six people. And at the end of the strategy call, just pure value, give them as much help as possible on those calls and then ask for a testimonial at the end of those calls, rack up those testimonials, post it on your personal profile, post those uh, testimonials on your personal profile. And then when people see you're le legit and you help people get results, that's when you can start asking for money uh, for your services or for your product. So the very first thing is just sheerly fucking give value, do trainings um, and do strategy calls to rack up test testimonials and then people will come to you uh, and actually want to pay you money. So what I recommend is not doing anything cold, like just frame yourself in a light that you help people produce results. Um, that's the main thing. So pure value giving right off the bat for free, rack up testimonials, and then you can ask for money. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Good question though. Zach, uh, it's the task mental model you used. <gasps> Dope. Um, Derek is saying, I have a Facebook group with 600 members and an email database of uh, 7,000, but I'm in the football recruiting and football camps. How do really monetize? Um, well, you got to create an offer. Um, you got to figure out what uh, your audience wants and what you can actually deliver for them. Um, the easiest thing to sell uh, and, and scale is knowledge. So um, the breakdown is when you're thinking of an offer, you think of it in three parts, right? So you've got problem, promise, process. What are the problems that my audience is facing? Um, where do they ultimately want to go in a certain time time frame? So that's the promise. And then what's the process that links their problems to the promise? What are those three to five steps that are going to take them from their current pains and their problems to ultimately where they want to go? And that's an offer in a nutshell saying, hey, I know that uh, you uh, – you say you have, uh, I'm in the football recruiting and football camps. Um, I don't know who exactly you're talking to. Are you talking to coaches? Are you talking to parents? Like, I don't know who really your, your client is, but what are their problems? Uh, where do they want to go? And what can you coach them through uh, in, let's say, a six-week, eight-week, 12-week uh, period? Um, and, yeah, that's an offer in a nutshell. And you can – hop on weekly group coaching calls. You can drop them in a Facebook group and just get them from their pain, from where they're currently at to ultimately where they want to go. That's that's an offer in a nutshell. Um, uh, Mario's, what's up Mario? I love you, man. Uh, how do you give away your training for free without devaluing your paid uh, coaching training? Um, so I get this question all the time, uh, your trainings inside of your group, 
uh, should be more on the what and why instead of the how. Um, but I would also recommend not holding back, especially if you're first growing your audience and just delivering like crazy, um, just pure value. Um, because I see people hold back on the content and they're not growing their audience like they could. Um, also people pay for structured information. They, they aren't paying for like inside of your group, inside of on, on your personal profile, the information's all the fuck over the place. Um, people are really paying for that, uh, uh, that structured information and that accountability. Um, if you're a coach, um, so don't hold back. Uh, Jeff Walker calls it moving the free line. The more free value that you provide, the more you can charge for your services and products. Um, and, uh, and starting out, if you're coming from a place of scarcity, you're never going to be successful. Um, so if you're coming from a place of like, oh shit, I need to hold all this stuff back. Um, that just means that you haven't developed your skills to a place that, uh, you like, you uh where you need to be and by putting your stuff out there for free it'll force you to come from a place of abund abundance and level the fuck up um and learn more and 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 just continue to hustle like when i was first starting out um i was just giving everything away for free um because that forced me uh to um uh, to really learn as much as I could about the space uh, so that um, I could level the fuck up. Um, so just go all in. Thanks for the hearts. What's up, Josh? Love your face. Uh, great question, Mario. Uh, what's the line between free and paid trainings uh, course look like? Uh, if you want to break down, it's just like starting out, don't fucking hold back. That is the biggest mistake people make. It's like, oh, I got to hold on to all this shit. Um, and really what you need to do is give it away so you're forced to level up and learn more. Um, but once you're at that point where you know a shit ton, um, then, uh, then it's more talking about the what and why in your content and then keeping the how more so inside of your programs. Um, boop, boop. So I hope that helps. Keep the questions coming. Thanks. How much is your coaching and training? Um, we have different levels depending on where you're at. Uh, I recommend hopping on a call with Grant Elertson. Um, he's my right hand man, knows the programs inside and out. Um, and he can give you a better idea of what's in the program and really figure out what's, what's the best fit for you and if we are the best fit to work together. Um, so hop on a call with Grant um, and the programs uh, Program pricing is always going up because we're always building out more and developing it. So I can't really put it out there uh, on a video online saying, hey, this is our, our price of our programs because it's always changing. Um, boo, boo, boo. But uh, Derek, I'll, I'll connect you with him um, if you're open for that. Um, that's so helpful, brother. Thank you so much. Josh is asking, how can I engage my group and get them to really want to be a part of it? Uh, do I just need a bigger why vision? Um, people are going to engage because of community. If you give them more opportunities uh, to uh, create this, like we're in this together vibe, they will engage a lot more. Um, so for example, my first group was the six figure digital marketer. They were all digital marketers trying to hit six figures, right? That's a mission, that's a direction, right? Um, for this Facebook group, it's seven figure business scaling secrets. It's all business owners trying to scale past seven figures. So creating a Facebook group around a mission and rallying together is the first step. And then putting in posts for opportunities to create community. Um, so putting in posts of, Hey, let's connect on LinkedIn. Let's connect on Instagram. Those are really good. Asking questions about their business and genuinely caring and answering back to the, those comments. Like if you're in startup phase, like if you are first growing your audience, uh, you need to do these things, um, to really cultivate that community. 
Um, and also the best thing that I ever did for my business um, and for the Facebook group is run live events uh, and really create that just really dynamic community because they've, they're now connecting in person and creating that tribe of buyers bond, right? Um, mine is called the sales king. So I guess everyone in there uh, to be king at sales, I would take that one step further like refine the ideal client for that Facebook group a little bit more. And what are they striving for? Like, is it 10 K per month? Like, is it that classic number? Is it more freedom in their life? Um, is it taking care of their family? Um, like what, what is it? It, it, it could be um, getting out of debt, fuck something like that, but it should be more defined in the mission your 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 face your Facebook group should be mission based. Like, what is the one thing that we're going for all together, right? Um, so everybody that has a Facebook group out there, like, really nail down what's the one thing that we're all going for, right? And that will create more of a community feel. Um, hope that helps, Josh. What's up, Liz? If you're still here, I'm excited to talk to you on Friday. Um, Grace is saying, do you have uh, some specific process or framework to get clarity on your project or business direction? Uh, yeah, uh, that is in, uh, so uh, we have that inside of the group growth and monetization blueprint. Um, what is the framework on getting clarity on your project or business direction? Um, ideally, your direction comes from your story what you've done in the past. So I would look back at your story and just like write it down and figure out what the fuck has happened in your life and what you can help people with. From there, start growing an audience around your journey. I grew my audience first on my personal profile and then I opened up a Facebook group. But start posting about your life. Um, and one thing that I, a little caveat that I need to say is that uh, like Brene Brown says, share your scars, not your gaping open wounds. If you're posting story posts or talking about your life, make sure that it's coming from a place of I have overcome instead of a place of I am currently sitting in my shit. Um, that's super important. Um, but share your story. And then uh, if you're going the coaching route, the course route, that sort of stuff, then I recommend just providing pure value and help people um, and hop on 30 minute strategy calls with people that you think you can help. Um, ideally people that were you two years ago, three years ago that you can help level up because you don't need to be an expert. You just need to solve people's problems. So get on calls with people, um, record those calls, give them them uh, those calls and your confidence will shoot through the roof when you're getting questions from people and you're like, oh, I can answer that, I can answer that, I can answer that, there might be some things um, that you might not be able to answer and say, hey, I'll find the answer for you or I'll find somebody that can provide you that answer. But just hop on calls and, uh, and uh, provide them with as much value as possible and then ask for a testimonial that you can leverage down the road. Uh, that's my main thing. Uh, thanks, Zach. Appreciate you, dude. Liz, if you guys haven't seen Liz's Facebook group on YouTube, go check it out. She is a fucking rock star. Let me see. She said, started interviewing YouTube influencers again recently and running Facebook ads to retarget my people using the event as the ad. And that's been working super well right now, too. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. Doing interviews in the Facebook group is just super powerful. Um, and combining that with Facebook ads in a strategic way. That's awesome. Um, uh oh, let's see. We got another question. I can't see who it is. I don't know why. Uh, quick question. Better to first focus on inviting people on Facebook group or prospecting them first. Um, First, focus on your personal profile. If you can't get engagement on your personal profile, you can't get engagement in your Facebook group. I, that's where I see the majority of people fuck up is that they're trying to run a personal profile and a Facebook group at the same time. 
um, and they're not getting engagement on either. And they're like, oh, what should I post in my Facebook group? What should I post on my personal profile? Like just nail down the strategy with your personal profile first and then open up a Facebook group. We did this with Jeff Miller. Jeff Miller runs a seven figure uh, business now, but when he was starting out, um, he didn't have any audience. He has over 40,000 people organically in his Facebook group now and has over 15,000 people on his email list. But where it started was his personal profile. We had him do a, a weekly Facebook Live every Monday for six weeks on his personal profile. He racked up engagement on his personal profile. Um, he didn't hold back on the content. And then he um, he opened up his Facebook group and got 500 people into his Facebook group in one day because he put up a post saying, hey, I'm opening up a Facebook group. And people got so much value from his free lives that they were like, hell yeah, I'll join your Facebook group. And a year and a half, maybe two years later, he now has a seven figure business uh, from that Facebook group. Um, and that just happened. It started two years ago from his personal profile. So put the work in now, start growing the audience now and that's something that can happen for you. Um, good question though, uh, Deja, Ricks. Uh, best ways to get uh, content ideas together uh, for marketing purposes. Um, customer research, um, so start growing that audience and then put questions out there. Hey, what's your number one pain point around X? What's your number one goal around X? Um, what's your number one fear around X? Do customer research. Um, and then what will happen is you will get feedback from your audience saying, hey, I wanna learn about this. And you're like, oh shit, I can, I can teach you about that, right? Um, so do customer research and that will give you all the content ideas in the world that you need to really engage your audience. So those those three questions what's your number one goal what's your number one fear what's your number one pain point like what's the one number one thing that's holding you back from what's your number one struggle like all we're trying to figure out here is like what is your current situation what is your desired situation what are your perceived challenges like that is like cutting off the gap like break everything down in your life into frameworks um because it makes thinking a hell of a lot easier. I devoted all of last year to personal growth and frameworks, learning as many frameworks as I could because it makes your thinking process so much easier because then you look at something and you're like, oh, I just need to do X, Y, Z. Um, so what I recommend is buying as many books as possible. And I don't know if you can see over there. Oh no, uh, there are a bunch of my books over there. There's my bed too. Um, but what I'll do is I'll go on Amazon, buy as many books around whatever I'm focusing on. Let's say I'm focusing in on sales. Um, I'll buy as many sales books as possible, and then I'll extract the frameworks from the sales books. Um, I will go to the chapters, and usually the chapters are broken down into frameworks. Um, so, yeah, just make your thinking process so much easier by learning as many frameworks as possible. So hope that helps. Kind of roundabout way to answer. Uh, Zach says profile first, group second, hell yes. Yep. Um, and that's what we teach inside the group growth and monetization blueprint is really hone in on your personal profile, uh, launch your beta program uh, first from your personal profile, minimal viable, don't need anything built out yet. Um, Jeff Miller made over $30,000 from his launch on his personal profile. Uh, Doug Botton, three weeks after joining the program, made $34,000 from his beta program. Um, and if you set it up in the right way on your personal profile and start growing that audience, it's, it's fairly easy if you're just committed to it over eight weeks uh, to make over $10,000 from your first beta launch from zero without an offer, which is like crazy. Um, and this business is a hell of a lot easier to build uh, than an agency business. Uh, and it's way more fulfilling. Um, so like, honestly, just commitment, commit, committing to the process. If you commit to this business model over a eight week to three month period, your life, your income becomes a hell of a lot scalable, more scalable 
because the delivery that is required in a course and coaching business is so minimal compared to an agency model where you got to hire so much. Um, it's just crazy. And especially like growing your marketing machine without paid ads and doing everything organically without having to put a dollar into it. It's crazy. Um, it, I'm so fucking blessed that I found this business model and started growing it um, because I don't know where the hell I'd be uh, if I if I hadn't. Um, do to do. Alex is saying really nice things about me. Would you say? Uh, can't miss step one. Hire Andrew Cruzy and Tob team. And question question thoughts on Facebook group name Congruent Coach Seven Figure uh, Scaling Strategies for Coaches. Uh, in the banner image, we're including what we're having, uh, the topics, client attraction. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I like it. Um, the reason why I like it is because your Facebook group name has a very specific mission and it says who it's for. Like that is the main thing that you're looking for. You want coaches in this group and we're going to scale past seven figures. Like being very clear on that mission in the name is crucial to attract your ideal clients into your group and they know why they're there. Um, I screwed up in the past where I tried to put my IP uh, in just my IP in the group name. So I put in uh, building your tribe of buyers in the group name. That was the main thing. Um, and it didn't attract our ideal clients. Uh, we didn't attract as many people into our group as we did with this name or previous names. So one thing that I would recommend um, is not focusing the Facebook group name on your own intellectual property or your business name, so on and so forth. However, your business name is very clear, congruent coach. Uh, so you're attracting coaches. So I think that's perfectly fine. I think that the group name is good, Alex. Uh, we got another comment. What's up, Cody? What's up, Kevin? Kevin, yo. Uh, Ron Curry Jean says, I stopped my current training to watch this. Value bombs, brother. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, shoot some questions over. I've got, I've got 20 more minutes, and I just love coaching and answering questions. So hit me up. Um, do, do, do. And really, I'm an open book. I don't hold back with any of my shit. Um, Liz is saying, I would also make sure you make your group name searchable. Uh, we get a bunch of people just looking for YouTube marketing. Yeah, having those keywords in there is pretty crucial. Uh, people aren't gonna search congruent coach. Um, yeah, uh, so I would, I would put that at the end. Do, 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 but keep shooting those questions out. Uh, I'm here for 20 more minutes. Send me that link. Uh, I'm gonna, Derek, I'm gonna hit uh, Grant up. Um, let me put Grant in here for you. If you guys haven't gone through the seven day or five day uh, group growth and engagement challenge, do it. Do it now. That's in the unit section. Um, oops. Shut your stupid here face for up, Andrew. More minutes. Ah, send me that. There we go. Um, Derek, I'm going to drop Grant in here. He'll help you out. Awesome dude. There you go. And then also Facebook group growth.com. If you're looking at the group growth and monetization blueprint, it's there. Um, I just dropped the link down below to that. Uh, boo, boo, boo. Let's see if you guys have more questions. Okay, awesome. Let me do this. Uh, okay, so Ron Curry James. Uh, where can I find? Let me go back here. Okay. Uh, I'm great at helping coaches scale. Not so great at grammar as I reread my unedited questions. <laughs> uh, and then where are we? Ron says, question after, after the initial sale of your course or info product, 
what's a good idea to get recurring income or making your program or service uh, monthly. Um, so, um, so with the how we did it, um, just speaking from experience, I created a beta program, which was essentially a coaching program that lasted six weeks. And then out of that, I built the videos that became our course. So the course is super scalable, right? And then I also created a coaching program that was at the time $4,500. So I had a $1,000 course, I had a $4,500 uh, coaching program. Um, and then what the, we put it on a payment plan, the, co the coaching program. So we were making MRR for three months. So 1500, 1500, 1500. So that's how we initially got that. And then after a year, we launched a 12 month program. Um, and that is really where our MRR took off. And now we have uh, a little over $90,000 in monthly reoccurring revenue for the next 12 months, about the next 12 months, it tapers off a little bit. Um, but I can't tell you how much like breathing room that gives you when you have that type of monthly reoccurring revenue coming in. Um, and it takes time to develop those skills to a point where you can sell a high ticket program for 12 months. Um, but once you do, it just makes your business a hell of a lot more scalable and, and allows you to breathe more um, because you're not start. I remember starting from zero every single fucking month and seeing that Stripe account for that month dropping from like 40, 50 K that month to zero. And I was like, whoo. And I had maybe maybe like 6K in MRR. And I would constantly try to hustle every single month to make the same amount of money. Um, but it wasn't until I started launch, I uh, launched my high ticket program uh, where that feeling at the start of every month went away. Um, a lot of our, our clients pay on the first of the month. Uh, so that big chunk of change coming in is like, I'm good, right? Uh, Robert is asking, let me see if I can find it in here. Uh, why can't I find it in here? Sorry, Robert. Um, how do you deal with the haters in a way where you still come off as a figure of authority and don't lower, uh, so haters, I block them. I have like over hundred people blocked, uh, on my personal profile and in the group. Um, I just don't listen to it. Uh, like it frees up my energy. If I see anybody being a dick uh, to me or anybody else in the group um, or like anybody on my personal profile, if somebody gets in a catty fucking fight on one of my posts, like they're blocked and then it's out of sight, out of mind. Uh, there's actually one person who used to be my mentor uh, that is a complete asshole um, and he's just talking shit all the time, but I haven't blocked. So it's not really draining any of my energy. Um, if he's going to talk shit, he's going to talk shit. And it's actually awesome because it's free promotion. People are clicking on my personal profile and then adding me as a friend and like two, three months down the line, they forgot why they added me as a friend. Uh, and then they become a client. Um, and I get like some people sending me screenshots of like what this person is saying. I don't give a shit. Like he's just a broken human being uh, and he's going to vent any way that he wants to vent. Those, those people just like, they need to figure their own shit out. They're hurt. Um, so I just, I just block them. Just, it doesn't waste my energy. So Kevin, if you have haters, just block them. It doesn't matter. Um, I love how I like unconsciously brushed off my shoulder. Uh, that's funny. Uh, okay. Uh, so don't fight in my Facebook group. All right. Uh, if you have time, I don't think you answered my last question in my initial one, Andrew. You know me well. Thoughts slash ideas on what my first training should be inside my group. Uh, shit. Who is this? I can't. It doesn't show up. Uh, doesn't show up. Who is saying that? Balls, man. I don't know who's saying that. 
Uh, better to do a public offer directly for a live event or run a challenge in a Facebook group, promote event uh, privately to community. So I don't do any, like we have the five day challenge, but it's really just five videos in the units section. I don't really do challenges like really what we do is like we cultivate an audience we provide awesome value inside the facebook group and then we like put up a post and say like who wants to join like we don't do anything complicated um like honestly it's not like anything like that she's like care about you guys driving value my clients get really fucking good results so I'm just gonna post up those good results, show, show you guys that we do awesome things with our clients and come join us. Like, it's awesome, it's fun. So we don't do any like crazy Facebook Lives. I've never ran a webinar. I've never, I kinda did a challenge, but it wasn't really structured like crazy. Um, it's just like, we follow the million dollar messaging sequence and hit those psychological triggers um, and then we're just really good inside of messenger. Like we're really good at conversational sales, uh, me and my team. Um, so, uh, that, that's, that's our big strategy. That's our big secret. Um, boo, boo, boo. Uh, Mike, how did you grow the confidence to charge 30 K for coaching? I'm sure that's a long winded answer. Um, that's a good question. So when I was starting out, like, did I think I'd be charging 30 K? Fuck no. Um, one thing that changed my mindset dramatically was actually paying 30 K. I actually, I paid hundred K for a mastermind and that started to give me the confidence. I still didn't have the confidence, but, uh, paying that caused me to level the fuck up. And then actually in that mastermind, I met Alex Moscow who drew this triangle and he's like, yeah, I charge my clients a hundred K uh, to work with me. I'm like, that is fucking ridiculous. Um, and that it's just constantly being surrounded by those people that are doing it and joining those programs that are teaching you how to launch high ticket offers because it's not, it becomes the new normal, right? If you join those programs where everybody else is launching high ticket offers, it's just a matter of time before you level the fuck up to the point that you're able to launch a high ticket offer, right? Um, good question, Ron. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, that's what I was looking for. MRR helps. Awesome. Cool. Uh, Kevin says, cool. I have a few influencers in my space as haters. And the whole following jumps on it. Thanks, brother. Yeah, delete them. Love the chillness, man. Uh, uh, where can I find more info on the nine triggers for sales message? Uh, so I posted a link to the nine steps to seven figures somewhere in the comments. Um, click on that. And then there is a link to the post where I describe all nine psychological triggers that Avery Ford this is Avery Ford's IP. Shout out to him. He's uh, he's one of our coaches and also our head of delivery inside of Tribe Buyers. Um, he's amazing. Um, so you can get those nine points uh, by finding the Google Doc that's going to be up in the comments somewhere, um, and then hitting on uh, the link that's in that doc. Do do do. What's up, Chad? Cool. I have Alexa telling me that I have a client success call to hop on uh, with my coaches. So I'm going to do that. Um, guys, uh, if you want to just like explore, uh, just jam out, tell me a little bit more about your business and just see if we're a good fit to uh, work together. Hit shoot me a PM. We'll do that. Um, but no pressure. Uh, I just love chatting with people. And I hope you guys got massive value out of this Facebook Live. You did. Smash that heart button, smash the like button, helps the algorithm, helps reach more people, um, level the fuck up. But I appreciate the questions, and uh, I'll do this again sometime, and uh, I'll see you guys.